Hey, would you call yourself an extrovert or an introvert? Either way, when you approach a networking opportunity, knowing who you are and how to be aware of it and adapt in a situation is key next time you go to a networking event. On today's episode, we're gonna to talk to somebody who battles anxiety and who calls himself an introvert and has still been successful at a networking experience. So today, join us on Word of Mouth. Get ready to improve your mindset, increase your skill set, and expand your network. Follow along as the CEO of Master Networks brings you over a decade of business networking experience. Welcome to Word of Mouth with Chaz Wilson. This is a topic that I actually get really fired up about, yeah. and I'm very excited to talk about it today. So I'll give a little bit of context behind it, and maybe not a definition, but uh, in the 1920s, Carl Jung coined these terms that we now know very well, introvert and extroverted. Yeah. And it was really just how we uh, exude our energies. Yeah. But over the many decades that have passed, I feel like those definitions have been warped a little bit. And because of some of the ways those things manifest, there's a bit of a misconception about them. So I was going to ask you what you've seen in the business world and with networking that kind of gives into those misconceptions. Yeah, I mean, I think always people come to the table and say, oh, and networking that's only for extroverts or really outgoing people. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is that um, it's interesting. Like I can be extroverted when I need to be, but I probably lean to be more introverted mm -hmm. than most people um, would think. And so how is it that we build a networking company an organization with a lot of introverts? Well, primarily I think the misconception is what we describe as an introvert and an extrovert. I actually think it's the way we get energy, mm -hmm. right? So uh, there's some people who get a lot of energy by being around people and being in these these uh, situations where they, they get energy by being around people. And especially during COVID and quarantine and isolation, those people are in, like, no joke, we need to keep an eye out for those people because they're not getting the energy they need when they're being isolated. The second thing is, from an introverted uh, perspective, like... That's people who, yes, they can go be what someone see extroverted like I do. When I do our big event connect every mm -hmm. year, that's three days of me being very extroverted. And I, I literally crash for three days afterwards because mm -hmm. that's where I get my energy. I, I like to be alone in my own thoughts at times. And so um, when I travel and I do a workshop, I like to go back to the hotel and be in my own space, kind of get my own thoughts back together. So that's where I think the introvert extrovert thing really for me is like, sometimes a misconception we we put labels on ourselves mm -hmm. too you know no i think it's interesting that you say that though that you would identify more as an introvert when you are like in front of a bunch of people all the time and maybe it's not the most comfortable right. way you are but i think that's very interesting because i think it's the way we get energy not the way we exude energy or right, not it's right. the way we get energy and so that's just my thoughts on it again no scientific no of course you know take to it but um I think it helps me understand too, how I behave in these certain situations that like being an extrovert or an introvert doesn't, it's not a handicap one way or the other. Like no, that's absolutely an also, not. you know, and I looked at that with my kids. I'm like, just cause you're more introverted is not in any way a deficit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's viewed that way. Right. Well, they, I feel like it's used like introvert is used as a, um, a synonym for reserved or quiet or shy. And it's, it's not, it's just right. how you recharge at the end of the day yeah. or how you prefer to receive information. So, um, that will lead us into yeah, so our I mean, guest. I, let, let me just, before we get to the guest, I think there's an interesting thing though, that it leads to how can you maybe view yourself either as an extrovert or an introvert? Mm -hmm. How can you thrive in the world of networking and business when you're one or the other, like you can win in both. So how do you do that? And I think our guest is going to give us some good insight to that. Yes, absolutely. All right, so I want to welcome our guest today to Word of Mouth. It's Ashley Burkeen, who is the regional partner for Master Networks in the greater St. Louis region, and also uh, the partner in crime co-owner, I don't know what your title exactly is, <laughs> with Extreme Remodeling. So welcome, Ashley, to the podcast. Hey, Ashley. Thank you. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Good. We're, we're doing wonderful. I, I love your sport in the Master Networks logo <laughs> on your... Your, Always. your zip up there. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. So you probably heard our introduction as we were talking about the introvert extrovert. How do you, first of all, how do you see yourself? If you had to pick a, again, a label of just for context of what we're talking about today, what would you say you are? 
Um, most people would probably, most people would say I'm an extrovert because that's the ash that they get most of the time. But I would think I'm an introvert, to be honest, because I like my alone time and my safe space kind of stuff. Um, but I have been told that there is an, it's called an am, amniobert. Yes, amniobert, yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is somebody that can balance both sides of it. But I would call myself an introvert for sure. Yeah, they look at introverts and extroverts as like one long continuum of just how you are. Uh -huh. So an ambivert is somebody who falls more toward the middle and can adapt. So. I think that's a great description. Um, but I, I could see why people think you're an extrovert because when you're in those social settings, a lot like I feel I am as well. That's like, what I was thinking It's almost too. like turn it on. I can be there, like no question. But it, it's like I have a battery life. Would you say you're like that too? Like at some point it's going to drain out if I don't get some – time to just that's why i love the gym because yeah. i can go there and not have to be on if you will yeah and, and so forth is that how you feel too yeah 100 percent. i definitely feel like it's a switch that you turn on and then if it's left on too long my battery runs out and i just need to take a break for sure yeah yeah so is being able to you know flip that switch on when you are in social settings something you guys learned over time or is it just Great. kind of how you've always been yeah what do you think ashley <laughs> Um, you know, honestly, like just knowing how, like how I grew up and who I was even in high school, like it is something that I think I had to grow into over time because I was definitely the shy, quiet kid, not comfortable with social settings, settings. And now like, I just want to have fun and dance around and be silly and like, you know, and, and just, um, engulf myself in the energy in the room. So definitely something I learned over time. Gotcha. What about yeah. you, Chess? Well, I mean, I, I agree. Cause I was shy growing up as well. Like there's stories of. And I do remember it. That's what's, I don't know why I still remember it, but I remember my mom taking me, walking me to kindergarten. Uh, and I was like attached to her leg. I was like <laughs> hugging her leg and she's like peeling me off. I think I have the same story. Do you? So, yeah. you, so, but you, you, would you say you're more introvert? Absolutely. Yeah. I why, feel like I don't why? necessarily even like we were talking about the ambiverts. I feel like I don't balance it as well. I feel like I definitely fall more on the introverted side, yeah. but that's, it's the same thing. It's how mm. I decompress at the end of the day and how I recharge is alone. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so Ashley, as you were talking about being shy in your youth and stuff. So would you say that, like, I feel like I have recognized at some point, I don't know exactly when that was that, uh, in those social settings for me to sort of, I, I'm just going to say it this way, get what I wanted, like meaning, uh, in business or whatever, or get to a result, I had to be more extroverted or more sociable in those settings. Yeah. Was that um, the same for you? I wholeheartedly agree with you on that because it wasn't until I got my first sales job where I had to rise to the occasion. Oh, you're kind of forced into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let's take somebody who's listening, who it like says, okay, I'm I'm deemed an introvert, put that title on me, and I don't really like those social settings or uncomfortable, but yet I know in business I need to get out there. I need to be, you know, I need to talk to people. That's mm -hmm. how we do business. How, what advice would you have for the introvert? Like, do you have two or three steps that they should consider, especially in like a networking setting like we're in with Master Networks? Yeah. Um, I mean, first and foremost, you always just got to do it, which is way harder, you know, easier said than done sometimes, but you just got to go out and do it, but definitely find somewhere where you fit, where you fit well. And I don't mean by like fit in by social standards. I mean, find people that are genuinely caring. They want to see you, um, meet the results of your business. They want to watch you grow, find those people that tribe, like what we like to call in master networks, find those people and start there. And then they'll give you, I feel like, my tribe anyways, will give you the confidence and back you up so that as you grow into that, you can kind of spread your wings out to other networking groups and other social situations too. That's, That's a, yeah. so, yeah, such good advice because I can imagine somebody who is more introverted and has that stigma associated with it going into the wrong group and then being burned for the rest of their lives. Yeah, but to to your point, it's, and that's where like the things we talk about with relationship building and stuff, you can take it at your own pace. Like you don't have to come in. So I want to just piggyback one of the things you said. I mean, if you're naturally introverted uh, again to what, however you describe that, but if you're naturally introverted and it's uncomfortable, there's a couple things to understand. Probably it's uncomfortable for, for everyone. Even those mm -hmm. that come across as like super comfortable and they're the life <laughs> of the party. There's some uncomfortability and some 
fear in that. And that doesn't go away when people get older and become adults because they had that as children. It's still there. So understand going into the room that lots of people are uncomfortable. It's not easy. The second thing is, but don't try to be someone you're not. Because that, that authenticity, that genuine ability to be you is what people will be attracted to. Because if you put on a front and you're somebody different, at some point they're going to get to know that. They're going to be like, wait, this isn't the same Ashley I met, you know, a month ago or whatever it is. So still be you, right? That's, that's an important piece. Yeah. Well, I would also say like, connect yourself with somebody in the room that is an extrovert, but like you, or maybe an amniobert, however you say it, uh, connect with that person because then you can rub off on each other and introverts. I think Elizabeth, you let me know, cause you have done research. Introverts are a little bit better listeners than I think extro- extroverts sometimes, right? Like they can listen better. And so, I mean, you can get those lists, they can get the listening skills from you. And then in return, you get that high energy back from them. So you could probably connect with the person that's opposite of you and rub off on each other. I don't know. Like I'm going to challenge that thought for a really? second. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me just challenge a thought. If an introvert gets energy being by themselves, like, and being in their own space, I actually think introverts get exhausted as well when they have, like, cause they have to be mm-hmm. with so much and listen and all of that kind of stuff. So, cause like, again, I see myself as that introverted way to get energy. And so, I mean, there's times when I've been at these events, I'll just, I'll be transparent. I'll just say I'm up there speaking, but then afterwards, you know, by the fifth person that's come up to tell me their story, I'm exhausted. Yeah. I, I like in the back of my mind, I'm battling. Like, I really just want to go back to the green room or go back to my hotel room. And, and then they're telling me their story. It's it, because again, that battery gets drained. Um, now they might be a better listener in the moment, but I think over time they'll, they'll. Mm-hmm. So if you're an extroverted person and you have the skill set of being a great listener, you are going to crush it. <laughs> like you will crush it. Yeah, there have been a lot of studies done. Uh, so there's a lot of correlating kind of information between introverts, extroverts, how they typically act in general situations, but it's psychology. So there's no hard answer. No. So it's all fluid. I mean, yeah, like why put the label on us anyway to be, and I know, right. you know, one of the reasons we want to have this conversation is because, you know, some of the things you've shared with me, which we'll get to, but how you've overcome those things. Mm-hmm. And I think those often are just self-limiting labels we put you know, on herself that we just say, well, I'm this or I'm that it says who, like who said you're an introvert? Who said you're an extrovert? Who said you're not good in social settings? I right. don't know. Maybe, maybe somebody did at some point, but probably, but it, <laughs> you also become a self-fulfilling prophecy at some point. If you continue to tell yourself I'm an introvert, I can't do that. Then you can't do that. So stop telling yourself you're an introvert. Okay. You're right. right? I feel very called out right now. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, Look, because you're very outgoing and you have all of those skills and I get it's it. That's why I think it's an energy thing, not a right an internal energy, not an external energy. No, I get that completely. That. So I guess with that being said, how do both of you prefer to be communicated with? Hmm. Um, I, I'll give you I'll give a good example for that. So and, and this is where Ashley and I actually are probably. Well, I don't know. I'll let her answer. But. So for example, like it's it's the golden rule of communication, right? If you think about the golden rule, it's do unto others as you'd want them to do unto you. But in communication, that is not the case. No, it's not speak to me the way, or, you know, you want to, I, I need to speak the way you want to Mm -hmm. hear it. And so like, for example, I'll talk about email, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, when people send me a three paragraph email, they're getting five words back because yeah. that's how I communicate. But that's why I appreciate people who understand that about me and will send me like a one sentence email. Yeah. Cause that's about what I'm going to read. And then I'm, I'm firing back the next email. Now, if you knew that about me and the best way to communicate with me would be on point to the point, keep it short, keep it quick. Yeah. All of those kinds of ways of communication help that put me at ease as an introvert extrovert what, what's it like for you Ashley I'm the same as you like I want short sweet to the point I don't necessarily like to talk on the phone like if it, it's a, if it's phone worthy and we need to have a conversation let's do it but like I'm real big on voice messaging and boxer and things like that like short sweet to the point let's get it done and move on I mean I'm with you for sure so how did both of you or either of you um discuss things or talk to somebody who is the opposite of that like they prefer to receive the information long form or all the details or. 
so that yeah <laughs> that that's the walk in on a on a Monday. So I'll just give you an example, right? This would be walk in on a Monday, and with Paige, who's in here today, in in here producing the show and taking notes. Like if if it was Paige, I would walk up and say, "Hey, how was your weekend? How are things?" Right? That's going to be a better mm -hmm. start to that conversation before I got down to business. Whereas Elizabeth's going to walk by me and say, "Hey, how's it going? Good." Hey, today you have on your calendar, like, she's just going to go right at that, right? Like, we just had that conversation, we did just have too. That, right? So that's, I think that's how you handle it is, you, is learning the people you surround yourself with so you know how to interact with them. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I There's some people that need a little bit of extra attention sometimes, and that's okay. And so I'll, you know, take those lengths to make sure that I'm communicating effectively to them. Um, because I've learned from Chaz himself, like what people hear and what you say are not always the same. And those lengthier need for communication type people, you really have to be clear in what your message back to them is. And sometimes it takes, takes a little bit more effort. So that's so true. Yeah. So, well, I want to ask you, Ashley, something though that we, and we haven't touched on it is, so you work with your husband in one of your businesses, actually both of them. But so let me ask you this. Would you say he's more introvert than extrovert? hundred percent. Why? Why um, do you describe he could like do without people and be totally okay with it. I mean, he really <laughs> could just head down and work and be fine with it. Um, okay, so then how how do the two of you balance that though? Um, he comes off his shell when he has to for clients and stuff. But I mean, anybody that's been in a room with us together, he actually I rub off on him a little bit, which is why I said what I said is because like today we're in a chapter meeting and he just came to life. So we bounce that energy off of each other a little bit, but. Let's be honest, if you've spent real time with us, I'm more of the show and Ryan is my awesome, you know, fan. He's he's my hype man, so yeah. <laughs> so the reason I brought that up is I just wanted to demonstrate that in the communication and how it ties into the introvert extrovert is probably throughout that time of your relationship, it's just interesting how remember these aren't personality so much as behavior and over time behavior shows up and has to morph and change and so over time, you've probably had to be, that's why people would see you as more extroverted because you, you've maybe had to be that, but over time now he's becoming more extroverted. So you can sort of dial some of that back if you have to, to reserve that energy. And that's why you're saying you're bouncing off kind of back and forth, uh, because it's, it shows up that way. My wife and I, we just did a podcast episode and we're a lot like that too. Mm -hmm. No. And I wonder how much of that goes into just confidence levels. Like if you mm -hmm. are going into it, telling yourself you're an introvert and you know, you are kind of more reserved than having that person that is very outgoing and extroverted, so to speak. Maybe that's just where the confidence comes from. Like you can rely on that person to yeah. help hold you up. That's a good point. So in a networking setting, let's say you were invited Ashley to a, uh, again, it's not some, the group you're familiar with, like you don't have connections there. You're invited to a, a chamber mixer or something like that. Uh, again, maybe it's a master networks group you've never been to. Like, what are your thoughts, first of all, going into that meeting and how do you prepare yourself? Like, do you have a goal, an outcome, like what you want to accomplish so that somebody watching today goes, man, that's me. I'm pretty shy going into this. How, how do they w work through that? Yeah. So this is going to shock a lot of people. <laughs> I am so uncomfortable going into a network meeting. That's not master networks. Like I feel horrible about it. I have high anxiety about it. I stress out about it. Um, the few things I do is I have to listen to like really good music in the car on my drive there. And whenever I get in the parking lot to hype myself up and bring that energy up in myself, I, then I, I walk in the that. room and I always find the person that's not talking to anybody because they probably feel just as awkward as I do. And so let's be together and not be awkward and be the people having the conversation. And then I always leave talking to at least five people before I left the room and grabbing business cards, depending on what networking group you're at, right? But grabbing information or business cards or setting up um, two face-to-faces or one-on-ones as they're called other places, um, right from that meeting. Because a lot of times I don't even play with a business card. I will say, well, let's do it now. What do you have on your calendar? Where can we set dates and times? But just know it's awful for me, um, but I work through and I push through it to build my network. So uh, yeah, people are not alone in that. Those are my goals though, inside the room. So you hype yourself up. Love that, by the way. I think that's important. I mean, I know lots of people, like I do that before I speak, right? That's why I like to be in my own headspace. I like to know where I'm at. And like, 
walk the room, listen to the music, do some th certain things. So you get yourself hyped up, but I love that you had a goal and then talk to, first of all, I'm going to identify someone who's like me, <laughs> right? And I'm going to connect with them. And then I'm going to try to meet five people. And if you keep it as simple and it doesn't have to be five, it could be two, it could be mm -hmm. one. Like if you're brand new to this and you are really, uh, concerned, just meet one person, make mm -hmm. it one person. That's all you have to do. Setting those goals gives you something to strive for. And then it's a little less, you know, anxiety inducing because you've got that one thing you have to accomplish and then you can go home. <laughs> well, cause then you're not judging it against anyone else. You're not right. in the event going, man, look at Ashley. She's connecting with everybody. I see all that. And I'm just not, it doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't matter. You went in and your goal was to connect with one person. You did it and you left. It's a success. You build on it for the next time. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's some confidence in there when you go the next time to the same luncheon or whatever. Right. And you already know that one person that you met last time. So now let's meet that person again and talk to one new one. So you yeah. get that yeah. builds into you. Yeah. I love that. I know. Like it's just some of the, if you really stop and think of all the conversations we're all having in our head is like no different than my fifth graders have, you know, going to school, walking in the lunchroom. Who do I sit with? Who do I connect with? Who do I play with on the playground? Like we're all a bunch of fifth graders at the social mixer. Let's just call it what it is. I mean, it's true, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned something, um, you talked about your, your anxiety and stuff and, 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 and what I've always, first of all, I just want to say this cause I think it's a powerful thing. What I've always, from the first time you and I met, um, you shared and were pretty open with me about some of the anxiety that you have that you challenge you're challenged with and you battle with. And I've always just admired that you've been open about it. Uh, you know, I have a daughter who has really debilitating anxiety and she's always looked up to you because you've been open and sharing that. And she watches, you know, the things you do on social media and how you're out there. And like, I think there's a bit of like, well, if Ashley can do it, I can do it kind of thing. But I know not to, not to put that burden on you in that way. I'm just saying there's people that watch us as we do this. How, first of all, how has anxiety shown up for you in the business world and how have you overcome that or how are you overcoming it uh, on a regular basis? Um, so it's a day to day thing. I hardly would think I overcome it. Um, Mac is not the only one that, uh, has reached out to me or said stuff to me about it, me being open about, it, which is why I continue to be, cause I think it's helpful for others. Um, but it's, I mean, it's a day to day process for me and with the anxiety thing, I just, I went through six years of my life, probably three years ago, where it was so bad that I was being uh, physically made ill. My mentality was making me physically ill. I mean, sick, sick. And I don't ever want to feel like that again. And my kids started um, getting old enough to pay attention to it. My husband went onto a business like he doesn't have enough to stress about, right? The contracting company got started. And so like, I just really had to find the strength to focus and say, you know, like this is going and could potentially kill you if you let it. But in reality, it's not going to, if you just take every single day, step by step, day by day, and just push through it. Um, I'd be lying if I said that, like, I don't go for 14 days strong, and then my anxiety is like, hey, lay down and go to bed. <laughs> it for sure is. But I just had to find, there was a purpose for me to be better. And part of that was sharing that you can do business and have really bad anxiety too. And it's not, it doesn't have to break you down that it could just kind of catapult you to the next thing in your business career. And so like, that's just what I have to look at every single day is I can choose to be that way, or I can choose to level up in my business and use that energy um, to put into that and dive into that. So, I mean, that's really, but it is a day to day thing. It's not, I'm not better at, by much. <laughs> wow. It's awesome. I, I just think it's pretty amazing. Um, that you, you, first of all, you identify it, you're, you're aware of it, you're acknowledging it, you're leaning into mm -hmm. it, but you're, you're pushing through it. Uh, but what's interesting, I, I don't know if I made the connection. I don't know if you said up until about three years ago, but about three plus years ago, you joined and started into master networks. And I'm not necessarily saying that was the answer, but I do think you fitting into a tribe of people that you feel comfortable with and supported by, uh, probably helped uh, you continue to build your network. Yeah. I mean, you're, it's, it is master networks. I mean, and, and things of master networks, right. A hundred percent is, which is why outside of just the results we've had in the business, 
is why I drink the Kool-Aid of Master Networks is because it really has been life-changing for me and it helped me find a purpose. I want to be there for people that struggle in business and like help them be successful at it and deal with all the other emotional stuff too. That means something to me. And so it 100% has to do with Master Networks three and a half years ago, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the who's counting, right? I love it. I love it. No, I mean, I, I do. I just, this, I absolutely love watching you and Ryan together, both individually. This is what I, this is, I just think it's cool both individually and as a couple, you know, I've seen the, I've seen the growth with each of you as individual business owners and people, and then together as a, as a couple, the way you've grown together in those three and a half years, I've just, I feel fortunate that I've been able to just, you know, blessed to watch that happen and, and to see that, that, that takes shape. And it'll be cool to see in the next three and a half years. But I do remember the first workshop or, or training you came to here at, at headquarters. And, um, I mean, that was where I really, you kind of shared some of that with me. You came up at one of the breaks right away and we're like kind of having a little bit of panic moment and, um, watching you just like overcome that in that moment, but being, there's just a vulnerability piece that I think is actually healing to what you were going through at the moment is you were vulnerable. And I don't know why you were like, I appreciated it. I was aware that you were being that and you didn't really have that reason yet to be there but you did. And I think that, so people watching this, what my point is, is that don't be afraid to trust people because that's, that's the power of a network and what's going to help you through that. Mm -hmm. And just, I think it's fascinating how you've done that. Yeah, I agree. I, uh, I mean, I was just vulnerable because I think we were at like a stop loss. Like we wanted to know what was next, you know, how do we communicate how to like, what's next for us. And so I think you helped that. Yeah. Thoughts. I honestly love Ashley that you said that you take it one day at a time, like one step and then the next, like that's how you're going to get where you're going. And I, I identify with that so much. And it's, I don't want to say <laughs> inspiring, but it is inspiring that you are so open about it and want to help people like yourself in business, networking, in personal situations. So since you've, started working here and being around mm -hmm. so many entrepreneurial minded people, like how has, how, how have, has that shifted for you? Like, has that changed for you? Like Absolutely. Yeah. No. When I first started here, what, two years ago, mm -hmm. I never even would have been sitting here. So, yeah. but I think part of that is just being pushed and made to do it. Kind of like what Ashley said earlier yeah. that you just, you have to put yourself in a situation where you have to do it. Well, I still remember when we were like, we even had the idea that we were going to, uh, I was going to have a co-host and I said to Elizabeth, oh, we were joking in the, in the office. I said, yeah, I think Corey and I both said, yeah, I think you. And then Katie said you, and she's like, yeah, whatever. And we're like, no, we're serious. <laughs> we're like, we're serious. So we think you should be the co-host. And then it was like, you could just see the panic come over her face. Like instantly, like, no, and we're like, yeah, you. And then I was surprised you showed up the next day for work because <laughs> I thought you were not. I'm not going to lie. I thought about calling it quits at that point. Yeah. But you just got to push through it like what Ashley said, one, yeah. one day at a time. Ashley, thoughts? Uh, any other tips or thoughts for someone who's you know watching this saying, I need to get out and network. I need to connect with people. Obviously, that's the key. We know it. We know it's successful. You've proven it. I mean, you've got awards behind you, covers of magazines there behind you. Uh, I mean, you, you've done some phenomenal things. <laughs> You've proven that. So somebody sitting there today saying, I just struggle. I got, I, I've got anxiety that holds me back. I'm an introvert. I can't, I can't networking. Networking is for somebody else. What, what would your tips and advice be for them? You know, just do it and find your people, do it and find your people, embrace them and they'll embrace you back. And don't be afraid to like ask questions of what to do next. That's okay too. Like somebody out there is willing to help you reach out a helping hand. And so you just have to do it find that your tribe and, you know, ask questions along the way. You'll be okay. I, I think it's sound advice. No truer advice yeah. has ever been given. <laughs> yeah. Very sound. Cause you need to connect with people yes. that are, that you're comfortable with and that's a network that will support you. So I just think it's amazing. Ashley, thanks for being our guest today on word of mouth. Thanks, thanks for so having much. me. It was fun. I so appreciate Ashley's candid thoughts about introversion and her anxiety that she's yeah. kind of dealt with her, her whole life and how she's overcome it. And I actually really like that she brought up the term ambivert because I feel like that gets overlooked so often. Yeah. 
people think they're either an introvert or an extrovert and there is such a gray area between it. Yeah. So I appreciate her thoughts on it. No, I agree. I just think overall the reality is, is that we put these labels on ourselves that are only there as self limitation mm -hmm. and they don't need to be like, if you feel like you're more introverted described on what we talked about, or you're more extroverted, mm -hmm. just own it. But then adapt to the situation right because here's the other side that we didn't really get into is in it as a let's say you lean more towards being an extrovert very outgoing very sociable that's not always great in every setting either right sometimes right. you have to dial that back and and so i think the uh, the two things that we didn't really talk about was being an aware like having an awareness of the situation you're in and then being able to adapt to that mm -hmm. situation so that's why it's it's okay to just own what you are own who you are but then have an awareness and adapt because otherwise you can come off either too quiet, too laid back, too reserved or too outgoing and overwhelming. Right. And like, you know, right. I have friends like that every once in a while and I love them dearly, but like there's, I have to take them in limited quantities cause they're just too much, <laughs> like <laughs> too much too, all the time. <laughs> yeah. too like, Whoa, yeah. slow down. Right. right. But that's just a difference of personalities. And I, that's where I think right. the labels could actually help just so that you uh, are self-aware it That's like it. helps you learn from it. Just don't use it as a just, limitation. Just for the awareness. For right. Sure. All right. We got random question time coming from Paige. <laughs> if someone wrote a biography about you, what do you think the title should be? Oh my gosh. See, this isn't good to ask these kind of questions because then it's like dead air, which is like the worst thing ever. Yeah. And my mind's gone blank. What would the what title are words? be? Wait, no, no. Here's better. Can I just interject? You should come up with my title and I'll come up with oh, your title. Oh, this is harder. No, I okay. think that's easier. Shoot. Okay, so biography of... I already have mine. <laughs> you do. I already have mine. It was what I said before. We were joking. Oh, is it? About the song. Oh, my God. Okay. What would yours be? For you? Yeah. <laughs> Now make good. <laughs> now I have a book already called Now Make Good. No, that's cheating. That's cheating. That's cheating. Oh gosh. I... Uh, biography. Get creative. Um. Oh uh, shoot, that is so tough a question. Like you got to come up with a title to describe it. This should be easy, but it's really hard. It's really hard. I think I would call it the the path. Oh. Okay. The path. The reason why I say the path is because she has a very interesting story, I think. I think it's interesting. And it it's still unwritten, so the path, she's still on the hand. Oh, wow. Cool. That was so deep. I win. Oh, my God. I you win. do win. We don't even need to do the next one. I like, win. it's over. Episode cut. Next week on Word of Mouth. What happens is when you have a problem or a challenge, it's so easy to get so hyper-focused right in that. Yes. That then your head is down looking at the problem you're trying to solve and you can't see everything else going around mm -hmm. you. And Only feedback I heard, well, in person anyways, was that yeah. everybody was so excited to finally get to see each other or meet each other since we, right. just as an organization, went more to, like, Zoom calls. He's like, oh, I said larger, not taller. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's a little bit of a difference. Yeah. Kind of... You're larger than I thought. Oh, no. Oh, no. So...